got that technology. <laughs> we don't have that technology yet. That's not legal? We don't even have that. Uh, I don't think the state police would even come up or something like that. They only have aircraft in Pennsylvania, but um, we'll put the time and effort into it like half what we've been doing. So we'll be around making sure. Okay, before we take the next before we take the next person who wants to come up and, and uh, address the board here, I wanted to mention we did get the camera in this this past month and it's up above the exit sign in the back back there. So what's going to happen is we're recording the meetings and they'll be on the website in its entirety. You'll be able to go on there and connect to a link and be able to see the meetings from now on. So I think it's good good progress here that we'll be able to have everything put out to the public. Okay, so the next, next person would like to come up? Hi, uh, FBD of 22 Birchway. Um, I know it's just about time for the, uh, the new uh, hospitalization for the administration building here. And I was wondering, are we going to be able to attend that? The public, that is. When the broker shows up. What do you, what do you, I didn't catch what you meant here. What okay, you're, you're, you're going to redo the, the hospitalization for the uh, people in the house, correct? Don? No, I don't think so. I don't oh, think you're not so. going to do that? Don, explain what happened. We just got an email this past month on that about the hospitalization. Initially, uh, it was uh, suspected that we would have to change our plans due to the Obamacare Act, or the enactment of the Obamacare plan, mm -hmm. in which case uh, Highmark, who is our, our particular provider, would no longer offer the same plan that they do now. So we would have to look for another product that offered the same or equal coverage under a different name. Well, uh, I believe the Obama, as it was explained to me, the Obama administration was getting a lot of pressure from people saying, wait a minute, you said we could keep our plan. So in our process, what they referred to as grandmothering, they allowed small groups to keep their current plans without any penalties in the Obamacare, uh, that, that the Obamacare would initially serve to those that didn't participate. So that being said, uh, there's no need to change the plans. They will be able to remain the same. When's the renewal date for the plan? The renewal for the, the, the renewal date for the plan renews every July. However, contractually, the board is obligated for two more years to, to keep the same plan. We actually have uh, uh, the public works and uh, the police department that's for two more years, correct? Yes, that is correct. Well, I mean, as far as the um, in-house people go, uh, is the HSA, FSA thing going to happen, or are we going to keep talking about that? The board is contractually obligated to provide an HSA for two more years. Okay. Um, for everyone. Can you send me an email on that to show me that? We have a collective bargaining agreement. Excuse me? The only document I'm thinking of is the collective bargaining agreement when their contracts would be up because that's where that information would be. Is, is so that, is that how, can that, uh, how can they be in with the union of the police? Yeah, that's, well, that's, I think, a different question. I think as to when that comes up, and that, that's when, when the contract comes over. And I think the policy, and I think on a term, I think the policy of the board has been to include for cost um, analysis the people, the individuals that work here, they're not part of those collective bargaining agreements in their particular plans. Is that accurate? Yeah. It has been passed around. Yes, yeah. that's what they've done. So everybody gets the same plan. Check. So you're telling me it's not possible for two years to change from an HSA to an FSA? Is that is that what we're saying? Correct. Well, you know what? I, I don't I don't deal with the, I don't deal with plans. But Don, is it part of the purchase price or part of the cost when you factor in? all the employees when you're doing the contracts as to who would be, how many people were in there? That used to be, yes, because the, the size of the group would, would determine premium premium costs, yes. Okay, so that might be that might be part of the contract arrangement where they factor in the price with the public works or police based on participants, and they've counted the people here in that participant for two more years. Although I don't know that for certain, I'm just speculating that might be the case. I mean, how how's the premium cost have anything to do with an HSA? It's just the HSA is not under the hospitalization. It's a totally different entity as far as who yeah, handles the money. It is the same thing. It, it, it the is. HSA is a type of health care plan. Oh, I understand that. But uh, for instance, if you got high, uh, Highmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield for your health insurance, the HSA is not managed by Highmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Am I correct? No, it's not. Okay, and that's that's what I'm saying. 
I needed, I, I'd like to have the information on your HSA company, and I understand Mr. Smith's talking about costs. The only cost to me would be sort of a management fee for that money, I would assume. Uh, but I'd like to have the information. You can, you can submit a right to know request, and I'll provide you with, I mean, be, be detailed in what it is you want, and I'll provide the information. Okay. Um, also, um, I guess the forensic audit's out of the question no. that I brought up last month. We have our audit going to be coming up in the next month or two, and there's no need for a forensic audit. Right there isn't? No. Okay. Um, was it correct that maybe like three years ago in police negotiations or negotiating a contract that uh, they, there was a forensic audit started by a lady by the name of Amy McCarthy? Does anybody recall that name? Mr. Cassio, I think, and maybe Don would have been involved in that. There wasn't a forensic audit that has to be performed. She was, she called herself a forensic auditor. Exactly. Yes. And was, was, was something initiated there? No, there was not. There was No, a, an audit was not performed. She didn't ask for any materials or anything? She had asked for materials, yes. Uh, so to me, that would be an initiation of an audit. It, no, the audit was not conducted. She okay. had initiated the request for information and withdrew that request. But I understand that, but she asked for materials, so to me that it, it constitutes a, the beginning of an audit. Yeah, and I understand and it, actually was, it actually wasn't an audit. You were misinformed. Well, then she was asked. You were misinformed. It, it was, she was asked to gather information uh, based on uh, historical data uh, for ten past ten years of budgets, uh, past ten years of audit and information. Okay. Yes, ten years. Yes, so that they could determine what is considered uh, uh, the ability to pay. It's a, uh, it's a tactic that's used across municipalities of Pennsylvania where police departments determine uh, if there's sufficient funds to determine how much they can go with their pay raises. I understand that, but if you're determining the sufficient funds and this lady is a forensic auditor, then I would assume that's what she'd be do doing to determine if there are significant funds to pay for the pay raise. No, she's just reviewing funds availability. It's not a forensic audit in, in the uh, I believe last meeting you read a definition of forensic audit. Mm -hmm. It does not meet that criteria for a forensic okay. audit. She, she audit is this. a gathering of financial information to determine the, the basically the financial health of the community. Okay. Um, okay. Is there any other questions? Yes, there is. You've used up your two and a half minutes here. Oh, okay. Well, well one thing I say is let's let's get the forensic audit going because uh, in the words of a uh, sign I saw it coming here, let's get back on track here. Thank you. Is there any other, any other comments? Good evening, everybody. Uh, this is for uh, Chief Pukovitsky, uh, our police dog. Is he privy to a bullet vest, a bulletproof vest? Yes, he, he currently has one. It's going to be expiring here soon. Why is it going to be expiring? Uh, after so long, the material uh, deteriorates, so they're only good for so many years, whether it's the spite of the dog. It's just like our body armor. After five years, the, um, the, the actual um, uh, carrier company uh, actually uh, states that they need to replace every five years because of the wear and tear. All, all safety equipment, whether it's a, a harness, a hard hat, only have a certain lifespan before they have to be replaced. Can I meet with you in your office sometime whenever you're saying that this is going to expire or that his vest is going to be thrown on the side? Yeah, yeah sure. Anytime we can actually uh, plan to purchase a new one because the dog won't wear the new one until uh, the one would expire, but yeah, due to the sweat of the dog or the wear of the dog wearing it, that's what causes us to have to get a new one. Well, I may be willing to fund the cost of the vest, but I have to know where it's going to be, and I'm going to need a receipt and everything, and I also want to be in on it whenever you go to purchase it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, is there any other further comments? But we're ready to move on with our business meeting then.